Okay, welcome to everybody who's uh, come to join our CSOC Paging Setup webinar. Well, today uh, we're going to talk about paging and how to set up paging up into CSOC. But first, let's go ahead and give a short introduction here to what CSOC is and what it can and can do. Uh, just uh, give a brief overview of uh, CSOC's features. So let's go ahead and get started here. CSOC is a voice over internet protocol software console. It basically it's scalable from two to two hundred radios. So basically you can this is a computer console application, so that way you can control up to two to two hundred radio lines. Now the number of positions that you can typically have in a dispatch center is is virtually unlimited. It's really limited based on bandwidth that you have on your network. It is a flexible, customizable uh, application, so you can design it in any way you like. Um, based on the screenshot that you see there of CSOC, you can see here that uh, you've got different colors in for different buttons. This can be arranged in almost any way that you can think of. CSOC, uh, we can do cross patching with CSOC. You can do up to 30 different cross patches within CSOC. We allow uh, uh, patching between radio to radio and phone to radio as well. Uh, we have instant recall recorder, which we do record up to 10 minutes worth of audio, either selected or unselected audio. And we also get parallel console status uh, in information that you get. So you'll know if another console changes frequencies on you, and also it'll let you know whether somebody is transmitting on the line and whether a line has been cross measured or not. We also support paging, which this uh, this webinar is going to be focusing on is uh, the paging feature of CSOC. We can do two tone 100, uh, two tone 1000, DTMF, NOx, stack, and manual uh, paging. We do support uh, signaling format, so we can uh, do MDC 1200 encode and decode, FleetSeq encode and decode. We can do DTMF and over the air FleetSeq. And uh, as well, we do 5.6 tone, which is typically a European format. So we can do also the, uh, with that 5.6 tone, we can support emergency, group, individual, and status calls with that. Now, as for information that we give you uh, through CSOC, we, we have uh, a proline call history. So you can see who called in. It tracks A and I and uh, the date and time that the person called in. Uh, we also get uh, a history of uh, active emergencies. Um, and also an active emergency window, so whenever emergency has been declared, it will actually automatically pop open and give you the ANI, the time that it was declared, and then you get some several options inside that window. And so as I stated, the emergency history uh, we give you uh, information on. We also support a manual call list and status, uh, and, uh, status windows that, that you see up in CSOC. Now, uh, the status indicators that we have, we have a 12 or 24 hour clock that is uh, selectable. We do have a view meter that you'll see in the upper right hand corner of uh, CSOC, so you'll know if you've got good audio coming out of your console. We have a PTT indication that usually shows up in the upper uh, part of the screen up in here. And then we also have an instant recall recorder progress um, that is displayed um, up here in the uh, status bar information up here in the top. Now, some of the other features of CSOC and uh, the different vocoders. We have uh, four different vocoders that we support. Um, we can do aliasing, so we can actually support up to 5,000 different aliases within CSOC. So if a radio ID comes into CSOC, we can decode that ID to a specific name or a unit that uh, you could program into CSOC. Now, we do support multiple interfaces. We support touchscreen, mouse script foot switch and uh, trackball um, for, for some kind of mouse control or, or like uh, to control CSOC. Um, when using an HB4, we can use uh, two, four, or even six speakers. Uh, the first two speakers would be select and unselect, where the speakers three, four, five, and six would be any positional speaker audio that you'd be able to select in CSOC. Displays. We support any standard single or dual monitor installs. 
microphones. We do support a, a various uh, types of microphones. Of course, we have uh, several of our own that we do support. Um, we got uh, various different goose decks. Desk yeah, headsets are supported, as uh, well as like our GTGN, which is a pretty popular one um, microphone that you can plug into the ADHB4. We do support P25 DFSI. This is an, a value-added option in the CSOT, and so it would take a, uh, an extra uh, key that you would plug into CSOT to be able to support the Daniels or Tate DFSI uh, repeaters. We do have a, a SIP telephony option within CSOT. It's, uh, the basic features are supported on CSOT licenses above 24 lines. Now, if you need enhanced features of uh, SIP, um, you have to buy a value-added option uh, for CSOP to be able to control up to six SIP phone extensions into CSOP. Intercom. We can communicate between two different consoles or multiple consoles that are on a network. So you can uh, communicate to a remote tower site without keying up a radio resource. So it allows you to be able to communicate uh, to different dispatchers or even people out in the field that might be uh, at an IP 3 site, so you can just talk to them back and forth. Um, the alert tones. We support three different types. we got a steady uh, pulse, which you can program the frequency that you want, uh, like typically a 1K uh, tone. We can pulse that tone, and we do have a high-low global tone that uh, we can support with that. Annunciation. You know, this is a, a very cool little feature of CSOC. You can actually play a pre-recorded wave file uh, to a programmed or a selected line that uh, that you have in CSOC. So think of a, a type of pigeon tone or uh, even an announcement that you'd want to be able to play across the radio or a PA system for that matter. You can have that pre-recorded and play it out to two through an IP 3 that be to be connected to your audio source that you want to play it out through, be it a radio or a PA system. And of course, we do support uh, programmed group buttons and mute buttons. So with one button press, you can uh, select multiple lines or mute multiple lines that can be pre-programmed. Well, based on that, let's go ahead and talk about how we do paging within CSOC. What you see here is a Telex Tone Group Member Plan. And so with the Telex Tone Group Numbers and Paging Plans, we do have several different uh, plans that we do support. What you see here is what we call our Two Tone 100 Paging Plan. We do have up to, if I remember it right, we do have, let's go back here, we got the tone group numbers of one through seven, but we also have uh, several other different groups beyond that. But uh, for this demonstration, we're just going to talk about the first seven. And the complete list can actually be found in the CSOP user manual. But basically, this is what you're going to see. We have uh, a table here of several different paging tones. How we look at this is we've got our Telex group numbers. This is what we're going to refer to in our paging uh, setup area. So just remember this top column, or top row here, and then we're going to look at these different rows here too. So we've got our, our columns, and then we've got our rows. All right, so this is the two-tone 100 plan. Here is the uh, second part of our paging plan for two-tone 100. So we've got up to 15 different groups that we uh, do support, and of course the 0 through 9 for each of those groups. Now we're going to talk about uh, the different types of uh, paging tones or gap durations. This is something that uh, we've come up with as a typical standard paging uh, timing that uh, you can actually do within CSOP. And so you give recommendations on the GE standards, um, motor roller tones, uh, any of the NEC type of tone that um, may go out. So we get the total group call times, the uh, tone one times, any gap duration of time in milliseconds, as well as the pre-programmed um, uh, tone times here for uh, the, the second tone that would go out. 
And this is customizable, so you can change that if you so choose within uh, the paging buttons themselves. So uh, there's no worry. You don't have to actually stick to this plan if you don't want to. Now, you do support Two-Tone 1000. It's similar to Two-Tone 100, except uh, it's a, a little different. And we're going to talk a, a little bit about how we we're going to set up a Two-Tone 1000 paging plan. Um, in CSOP, but it's a little different in how you would set it up. But these are the different uh, uh, the uh, different uh, codes or tone numbers that code plans that we can actually support. And of course, you can see the different uh, cap codes that we we can do with this. And of course, we got the 17 different uh, plans that we do support within uh, the uh, Two Tone 1000. We're up to 25 groups now on uh, the two-tone 1000. And of course, if you're into the European European paging tones or the European tone frequencies, this uh, we do have a different tone plan for each of the different European styles that we do support, which is uh, ZDEI1, ZDEI2, KEN, the PZDE1. The DZV1, the PDZV1, the CCIR1, the CCIR2, the PCCIR, the EEA, Euro signal, and the uh, NATO. And of course, uh, with the Motorola ones, we do the EIA and the MODAT uh, uh, paging tones. And then this is the table of the different tones. So. Um, and of course, if uh, you have paging tones that are not included in these tables, uh, don't worry because we do have manual paging in CSOF, so you can actually type in the frequencies that you need to send out and the durations. So there's not a problem there. Okay, so if you were uh, to be able to set up a manual page button um, in CSOF, so like in those previous tables, if you didn't see your tones in there, that's okay. This is the page button that you would want to use. And so, as you can see within uh, CSOC, when you set up a manual page button, you can set up, select up to five different tones that you want to be able to sit out, uh, send out. And so that's uh, a tone that you can do in each one of these. So you can do tone one, tone two, tone three, tone four, tone five, and then the duration in milliseconds here. Uh, for each of those tones. And then, of course, if you want the talk time after the page is sent, it allows you to, um, the page to go out and allows the dispatcher to speak out right after the page has been sent out. And of course, if you have a sling, send on selected, not steered option, you can actually tell it to go on a selected line. Or, if without this selected, it will go out on the frequency that you programmed it for up here at the top. And of course, the initial lead-in delay is the time that uh, it allows the radio time to key up before the page tones are actually sent out. So, if uh, there are any questions here before we go into the demo, I'll go ahead and uh, take a look at any uh, questions that people may have. They can uh, either raise their hand on the uh, screen there by clicking on the uh, the option there at the top um, for chat. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you can uh, go ahead and uh, just type me uh, in the chat the kind of question that you have, or raise your hand on the slide there, and I can tell who may have a question, and I'll uh, try to answer anybody's questions they may have. So far, no questions have come up. Well, uh, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and just open it up to anybody here. I'll go ahead and pull the lecture mode off, 
And uh, so if anybody's got any questions, they can ask now, okay? The leader has turned lecture off, now, and your line has been the, unmuted. Uh, mic or mute has been taken off, so if anybody's got a question, can go ahead and ask now. Hey, Chris, you going to the IWCE this year? Uh, no, sir. Um, unfortunately, uh, I've been lucky at the office to be able to do the webinar, but to answer telephone calls as well. <laughs> That's what I usually do for the last two years. If there's no questions, then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll turn the lecture mode back on, and then we'll go ahead and start the demo. And then I'll, after the demo, uh, I'll go ahead and try to uh, answer any kind of questions that people may have. So um, let's go ahead and turn this back on so the line's going to get remuted here, okay? The leader has turned lecture on, and your line will remain muted until the conference leader unmutes your line. Let's go ahead and switch over to my demo computer here real quick. Okay, so what you see here is uh, our first design that we created uh, last month. This is the uh, first part of the uh, webinar that we did, and we just did a basic setup of CSOT. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a two-tone 100 pager. And so what I'm going to do is open up my CSOT user manual, and I'll go ahead and pop this open here. And if you notice, I'm on page 369 of the CSOFT manual, version 6.1 manual. And so I'm looking at my different page plans that we have here. So you can see the telex group, group numbers here, which you've got telex group uh, 1 through 7. And of course, if I go down to the next page, you can see the different uh, plans that we have here, 8 through 15. Now, as an example, I'm just going to pick out our uh, the tone group number, uh, telex group number four, this is the Motorola plan four. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out tones 339.6, and then I'm going to take uh, tones 422.1. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up group four, and we're going to use uh, row one. And we're going to use row five. So we're going to go back to CSOFT here. And first, we need to do is go to the edit menu and go to set up pagers. So what we need, we're going to do is set up the page plan number one. And we're going to set this up as two tone 100. And I'm going to click on the setup button here for this. And so we'll give it a paging name. So I'll just name it what it is. And then, of course, we've got uh, page level. This is the expected page level that CSOFT would actually send this tone out uh, through the IPGD3. Now, this page level is relative. A lot of this has to de depend upon how your levels are set in your IPGD3. So if you have your IPGD3 properly aligned, this page level should go out at or really close to your minus 3 level. And here's our initial delay. Uh, basically key up time uh, before CSOFT actually, or the IPTD3 actually plays the tone out through to the radio, which 100 milliseconds is typical. So what we're going to do here is, so this is our tone one group, and we've got a tone group two group. So let's go back to our, eight, our CSOFT manual, and basically we want to be able to pull from group four, because we're looking for the three 
and we're looking for the 422.1, and they're both out of the till group number four. So what I do is that this is both of my tones coming out of the uh, column four, and then the tone times, which I'll set mine up for 1,000 uh, for the first tone, and then 3,000 for the second tone, and no gap between the tones, and then uh, no group of tone time. And of course, we're not going to deal with any diagonal tones, so we'll just leave that unchecked. And so that's the first part of the paging setup. So we'll go ahead and say OK here. And then say OK here. Now, to actually set up a page by the name to see thought, we can right click anywhere on this blank part of the screen here. I'm going to tell it to add button. And then we'll go to the properties of this button by right clicking on it and going to properties. And then what we'll do, we'll go down to Page. Select that. And of course, we're going to associate it with uh, the one line that we have set up in our design. We can change the colors of it, which I'm going to change my background to black because that's what my screen color is. And then now we go to the Page Setup. Now, in the Page Setup, we have the format that we just set up. That was uh, under the Edit menu, under Setup Pagers. So we set up this one. We called it Two Tone 100. Now we're going to tell it what frequency to go out on. In this case, I'm just going to do it on Freak 1. Any talk time that you'd like to be able to talk out after the page is sent, I could program that in here. But uh, for my taste, what I'll do is um, I'm going to set 250 milliseconds in here. And I'll describe what, why I set it for just a short time here in just a second. Now, the page string, this is really important. This is the rows that we want to pull the, uh, those tones from. So we'll go back to our Seesaw manual and talk about the two tones that we wanted to pull out, which is the 339.6 and the 422.1. So what we need is row 1 and row 5. So rows 1 and 5 need to go in there. So let's go back to CSoft Designer. So our page string is going to be row 1 and then row 5. And then, of course, we could tell it to send unselected, where it would not be steered to this particular frequency or this line. It would actually go out on any line that you have selected. But for our case, it's we'll just leave that unchecked. Now, one thing uh, the talk time is important for, and I set this for 250 milliseconds. The reason why I set it for 250 milliseconds is so when the page goes out, after the page ends, this talk time actually gives a audible beep to the dispatcher. Um, I typically set this at 250, so that way the audible beep be played to the dispatcher. So that tells the dispatcher that they can press the PTT button in their Seesaw design, then to key up the radio and then start talking. I use it more of a trigger for the dispatcher, so that way the dispatcher can key up as long as they want and not get uh, distracted by how much time they have to speak after the uh, talk time is. And of course, if you have more questions about this, um, I'll go ahead and open it up here in a little while once we're done with the demo. So, as you can see, this is our two-tone 100 format. So, that's basically the whole setup there. So, let's go ahead and say OK here. So, there is our two-tone 100 page. In fact, if we wanted to change that, let's go into the colors. And we'll call it uh, two-tone 100. So we'll actually give it a label there so we know what it is. Now, if we wanted to set up a two-tone 1,000 page, well, what we need to do is then go into the uh, page plan, uh, the p excuse me, the edit menu under set of pagers, and then we'll pick the page number two and set that up as a two-tone 1,000. Now, if we go to the setup button there for this one, we can give this a name. Two tone 1000. And it's going to be similar to how the two tone 100 was set up. So, what we're going to do is go back to our CSOC user manual and let's look at our two tone 1000 numbers. See here, 
starting on page 371 of the CSOP uh, 6.1 user manual, you'll find the two-tone 1000 plan numbers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the Motorola F tone, which is going to be code plan number 5, and I'll probably do it uh, the uh, 5 uh, plan here. And so it's going to be a 531. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pick up our code plan first. And this is where we set it up in CSOC under the Setup Pages area. So I'm going to tell it the tone plan number 5. Our tone run time, make 1,000 milliseconds, no gap duration, and then tone 2 time, 3 seconds. And no total group time and no diagonal tones. So right now, we're setting up this page to be pulling out of tone plan number 5, which corresponds to this code plan here in CSOC, um, the in CSOC Designer's Manual, under the column 5 here for Motorola's F type of plan. And then I'm going to set up 5 here and do the 3-1 plan. So this is your cap code, typically. So what we're going to do is then go back into CSOC and get out of the Edit menu under Setup Pagers. So now we've got our two tone 1000 set up here. I'm going to say OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold down the Control button on my keyboard and drag this over. I just made a copy of this button. So now what I can do is go to the Properties of this one, and we're going to leave it as a Page button. And we're going to tell it to go out across the same radio because we only have one set up in our system. So now we've got the page set up of this instead of the two tone 100. We'll change it to the two tone 1000. And then we're going to put in a page string. So what's our page string? So let's go back to our CSoft designer, or excuse me, CSoft manual, and we'll go. We're going to pull from plan. Five, the, the, the row five, and then we're going to do three one. So our actual code is going to be a five three one. So let's go back into CSOC Designer and change this to a five three one. Just that easy. And we'll say okay there. Now let's say if we wanted to do is set up some other type of paging plans. So like we want to do DTMF or not. We can certainly do that. And let's go to the setup of the DTMF one, and we'll call it DTMF. DTMF on type for each digit that you're going to uh, send out. And what we'll do, we'll do it at the uh, 5, well actually let's do it 250 for each digit on, and 250 off. And the number of digits, let's do a 5 digit plan. So. Basically, it's going to be a total of five digits that's going to go out on this uh, paging uh, that we set up here, this page button. So we'll leave that. So 250 milliseconds on, 250 milliseconds off, and of course, initial de uh, delay from uh, 100 milliseconds in the expected level here. So let's say OK there. And then we'll set up our NOx, you know, let's call it what it is. And the NOx on time will do the same as like the DTMF. 250, 250, and we'll do five digits there. And then we'll say that this is default. And we'll say OK. And then get out of the uh, edit menu under set of pages, get out of there, press OK. Now, what I'm going to do is make a copy of this one and make another one. And I'm going to reprogram these for this one to be DTMF. And this, we're going to change the uh, a page string to the five digits that we want to send out. So in this case, we'll send out one, two, three, four, five. And then um, we'll make sure that it's steered. So we'll make sure it's going out on uh, frequency one. And we'll say OK here. Now notice we've got to change our text here. So we'll call this one DTFF. Go back into this one and change this one to two tone one thousand, and change this one to Knox. 
and then we'll go to the page setup, change the format to the max, and then we'll make this one a, uh, a five-digit uh, string because we told we're going to use five digits, and we'll do 98765. And then we'll now check the send unselected because we want this to be steered. And we'll say OK. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of move these over here to one to make it look a little bit nicer. And these are our page buttons that we just set up. So now, if we need to go ahead and start or actually save this design, should have no errors. And then we'll try to run this design. And it takes a little while here because I got a lot of things going on on this computer right now. Once it opens up, thinking. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. Let's uh, set this up on frequency one. And let's see if our two tone 100 page play comes out. Okay, let's try that one more time because I just unsquashed my radio here. Our two tone one hundred. Here comes our two tone one thousand. Here's our DTMF sounds. And here's our Knox. any kind of questions that we have here. So let's uh, do this here. Uh, this is live. And so do we have Elliot any has turned lecture off, and your lines have been unmuted. Don't you have to send out a certain frequency and usually a certain tone for a certain amount of time before you do the DTMF? Well, it's, it's uh, really choice uh, is up to you. When you program the actual knocks, you can actually tell it um, the digits that you do. But the actual initial delay that you want to send out can actually be done in the <coughs> setup major plan here. So if you got an initial delay, you can actually space that out. Oh, I got you. I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Don't worry about being shy. I can certainly help out anybody here. Uh, 
Will somebody try to speak? Hey, Chris, this is Sam at Rockback Communications in Flair, Wisconsin. Are you yes. going to go uh, how to set up for stack pages? Oh, yes. Stack pages is not too hard to do. Uh, what we'll do is just add, actually, just copy one of my page buttons here. And we'll just change the property of this one to be a stack button. I think it's called page stack. Yeah, page stack here. And uh, what we'll do is then say OK. And page stack is really simple. If you wanted to stack your pages and get this to run again, of course, it might take another few minutes. Oh, well, I guess it helps if I save my design, too. So if we need to stack a page, press the stack page button, and then we'll just stack all four of these uh, together here. And then, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add my page show button. Sorry about that, guys. I've got to step here. I uh, thought so. <laughs> you know what? You work with this every day, you still forget stuff. Only when he opens it up for comment. All right, so here's our page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now. But he opens it up for comment. Hi. All right, so yeah, here we go. We're going to go ahead and stack these four pages together. And then press the same thing. And there's your your stack pages that went out.